Hi, I'm Nick Holland with Information Security Media Group. I'm joined today by Mike Fong, who is the President and CEO of Privoro. Correct. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Nick. So, we're going to talk about mobile hardware endpoint protection. And you just showed me a fascinating demo of your hardware, but I mean, if you can articulate what the problem is with current generation smartphones and sure. why, why you've brought this technology to market. Yeah, sure, so there's uh, probably a couple macro trends that uh, define why we exist. Uh, first, smartphones are now the primary compute device on the planet and right. they will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, and that's great, except that they can collect a lot of data and they also are fundamentally commercial devices, so they have security issues. Mm -hmm. um, so the second major trend is that voice is emerging as a primary interface for all of our devices. Right. And that's great, you know, but the issue is, as humans, we want to, it's easier to talk than type, uh, but if you deal with sensitive or confidential information, or you care about your privacy, uh, you really want to make sure these things only listen when you speak to them, not all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, if you think about those first two trends, and you say, well, how do you solve them? Uh, when we looked at it, we said one of the challenges is that software-only security doesn't solve the problem. We're not saying that people shouldn't have software security, but as the general public has become more aware over the past year with things like Spectre and Meltdown, uh, if you come in at a layer below the app or the operating system, say you attack at the firmware or chip layer, you bypass any defenses at a higher layer. Yeah. So those are sort of the three trends that we looked at. And we said the solution to this stuff is you actually have to build uh, high security hardware that pairs with the commercial device. Right. And so that's what we did. So we started down at the chip layer, it has what's known as an independent hardware root of trust with a very specialized security and crypto architecture. Yeah. It's resistant to all the chip and firmware based attacks. And then you build value added services on that platform uh, and cloud integrate it so you can manage it as well. So Mike, uh you, you have some of the hardware on you. Yeah, I sure would, do. Would you like to just quickly show yeah, our it, viewers what that it, looks like? It's fun since we make devices, we can right. show them. So uh, it looks like a phone case, but this is the high security but platform. But that's just an iPhone in there, right? Yeah, it's just an iPhone, yeah. iPhone 7 or 8. Uh, so basically the way it works is if I go to the camera app that we're all very familiar with, and let me go to video and turn it so we can both see the selfie camera. Yeah. So if I record, let's see if it's recording. So here I am, here's Nick, Hello. Uh, and say we're talking about something confidential. Yeah. Um, our earnings are going to be three times what we thought they're going right. to be. Uh, we'll report next week. Um, oh, we're going to move, move troops into uh, near Crimea uh, okay. next year. Okay, so then if you play that back, and you'll be able to hear how it works. So here I am, here's Nick, uh, and say we're talking about something confidential. Um, our earnings are going to be... <laughs> So the, the key, right. the, 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 let me pause it. So the key is you get full use of your phone, yeah. but basically while the hood is down, the lights are green, you know that no, every single microphone is separately and independently jammed to a nation yeah. state threat model. And uh, if it turns out you want to make a phone call, or take a picture, you just simply pop the hood up, okay. make a call, take a picture, and you get use sure. of your phone. So I can see obviously a government application for that. It makes a lot of sense. And you, you're saying that in fact there's most government entities do not allow you to bring your own device, right? So yeah, you know, if you think about the attack surface, um, you know, uh, from a government perspective, mm. wars have turned on information, Enigma right. Machine, and many other examples. So they understand the sensitivity, and, and most information that's very strategic is spoken out, spoken about before it's reduced to writing, yeah. or it could then be stolen by other hacking methods. So they ban smartphones, knowing that you know uh, sophisticated adversaries can actually get into these yeah. types of phones, and so. Um, so they ban them, and it's a real issue from morale, uh, recruiting, retention, and productivity, mm. because one of the biggest trends in the world is mobility. Right. right? Millennials especially, they, uh, you know, they are surgically attached to these devices, mm -hmm. it seems, and uh, it's hard to get them to come to work when you say you're going to leave your right. phone in the parking lot 10 hours a day. Sure. You mentioned it also, I mean, it's, it's not just sort of government, there, there are obviously large you know, multi yeah. multinational companies, Fortune 100 companies, whatever, where their executives travel often, and competitive intelligence is, you know, the difference between sinking or swimming, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? So, um, m most uh, large corporations have a burner phone or burner device policies mm -hmm. when they travel overseas, and what they don't do is they, they, they say, well, we know we're bringing these phones into meetings, and we're over there to meet with people and have conversations mm -hmm. about partnerships or bids or whatever the case may be, but they don't uh, stop the phone from being used for surveillance, and now they can. Yeah. Um, and there are examples of corporations having uh, concerns about eavesdropping on very sensitive 
whether it's trade negotiations, arms negotiations, mm -hmm. business contract negotiations, uh, we have examples of that have then approached us about, hey, can we put these things on our devices? Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. It, I think also, I mean, this trend towards voice interface is clearly, you know, I mean, I, I rely on, on, you know, Alexa in my home more than I probably should do. Yeah. It's become pervasive in the car through, you know, obviously your, your watches and, and everywhere. So, you know, I can see there's a real opportunity yeah. for this. You know, we think that the core technologies mm. we've developed actually have a play across, across the entire horizontal technology right. market. So basically, whether it's a phone, a tablet, a computer, a laptop, a television, an Amazon Alexa, uh, over time, you know, you'll see us uh, start to provide control back to the user yeah. about when these devices can can listen and capture trigger words and be doing sure. sort of targeted marketing and advertising and profiling. Which is interesting, because I think that there's, there's a parallel in, I think there's, you know, generally consumers are swinging back to owning their identity more yeah. and, and, you know, having more control over their privacy, like, you know, as you see with things like, you know, GDPR in Europe and I yeah. think post, you know, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, there's, there's definitely sort of a, a sea change going on there. So yeah. I, I could see that also applying to, again, personal devices and where, where those are actually broadcasting information. Yeah, you know, on the consumer side, which mm. you know, we're initially focused on DOD and IC yeah. and obviously uh, executives at large corporations, um, but on the consumer side, we've done a bunch of market research yeah. and uh, if you can be frictionless, uh, consumers do care about mm. privacy and security. Obviously, if there's any friction, then they sort yeah. of don't necessarily take action, right. um, but uh, you know, the, I think more people are becoming aware that it actually costs some money. So mm. dynamic pricing, uh, examples of saying, "Hey, you're on an iPhone device, which maybe means you have a higher economic bracket." You know, and mm. the companies may charge you more right. for the exact same good or service. Right. And there's lots of examples of that coming into play. And as people become more aware of that and individualized underwriting by insurance companies, they're going to want to protect their information even more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Mike, uh, fascinating conversation, fascinating device you've got there. Thanks very much for joining me today. That's uh, Mike Fong of Prevoro, and for Information Security Media Group, I'm Nick Holland.